But the undeniable reality, the undeniable truth is if the president succeeded in raising the minimum wage, it would cost jobs from the most vulnerable. The people who have been hurt by this Obama economy would be hurt worse with the minimum wage proposal before this body. In 2013, the president in his State of the Union address proposed raising the minimum wage to $9. Now, a year later, the request has magically changed to $10.10. The only reason, there's no economic justification. The only reason is politics. I suppose if the approval ratings of Democratic members of this body continue to fall, in another month we'll see a proposal for $15 an hour and then maybe $20 or $25 an hour. But I think the American people are tired of empty political show votes. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office says that raising the minimum wage could cost a loss of 500,000 to 1 million jobs. Madam President, I want the American people to realize, every member of the Senate that votes for the minimum wage is voting to tell up to 1 million Americans, your jobs don't matter to me because I'm voting to take away your job. And by the way, this view is not only the view of the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. On March 12, 2014, over 500 economists, including three Nobel laureates, sent a letter to Congress that said, the minimum wage is a poorly targeted anti-poverty measure. I'll give one example from my home state. Go Burgers, which is a Texas company with six Burger King restaurants, analyzed the effect of the minimum wage increase on their employees and their businesses. The last minimum wage increase we've seen was from $5.85 an hour in 2007 to $7.25 an hour in July of 2009. 2010 was the first complete calendar year that Go Burgers had to analyze the impact on their workers. Go Burgers discovered that raising the minimum wage by 23.93% caused these Burger King restaurants to reduce the available hours worked by 24.98% for a net sum loss in hours and wages for the typical employee. Let me repeat that. The experience in these Burger King restaurants was the employees were worse off after the minimum wage was raised because their hours got cut in direct response to that. These six restaurants eliminated over 40 jobs and reduced the average number of hours worked per employee. In total, these six Burger King restaurants reduced the man hours allocated by over 60,000 hours in 2010. And sadly, the people who bear the brunt of that, they're not the rich and powerful. They're not those who walk the corridors of power in Washington, D.C. have gotten fat and happy under the Obama administration. The people who would bear the brunt if this bill were passed would be in substantial degree young African-American teenagers and young Hispanic teenagers. Right now, young minorities, if you look at unemployment rates by race, just looking at the official unemployment rates, Anglos have an unemployment rate of 5.8%, Hispanics 7.9%, African-Americans 12.4%. Nearly double that in the white community. It's even more heartbreaking among teenagers. White teens currently have an unemployment rate of 18.3%, but African-American teenagers have an unemployment rate of 36.1%. 36.1%. Madam President, every senator who votes yes is voting with an absolute certainty that hundreds of thousands of workers, including a great many African-American teenagers, a great many Hispanic teenagers, will be laid off as a consequence of their vote. I would challenge any of the senators in this chamber to look in the eyes of those African-American teenagers, those Hispanic teenagers who are looking for a better opportunity. And, and Madam President, 
If you detect a note of passion in my voice as I discuss this, it is because in my family this is not an abstract, hypothetical situation. Fifty-seven years ago when my father fled Cuba and came to Texas, at the age of 18, penniless, not speaking English, his first job was working in the restaurant industry as a dishwasher, making 50 cents an hour. And the, and the restaurant industry has been such a terrific avenue for climbing the economic ladder, for achieving the American dream. My dad washed dishes at 50 cents an hour to pay his way through college, to go on to start a small business, to work towards the American dream. Madam President, if the majority leader had his way, the minimum wage were jacked up if back in 1957, the restaurant where he worked were forced to pay every worker $2 an hour. The odds are very high that that restaurant would have fired my dad and bought a dishwasher instead. It was that entry-level job that gave him the grip on the first rung of the economic ladder that let him pull to the second and the third and the fourth. And this bill, if it were to pass, would hammer those on the bottom of the economic ladder, would take away jobs from the most vulnerable among us. So what should we do instead? Because, Madam President, we can talk about the problems we have in this country, but we need to talk proactively about better solutions. And fortunately, we are on the cusp of a great American energy renaissance. I've introduced legislation to remove the barriers to developing the abundant energy resources we have in this country, barriers that, if removed, would allow the creation of millions of high-paying jobs. Madam President, the discussion before this chamber is whether to raise the minimum wage to $10.10 an hour. But Madam President, even if it passed, that is not the Obama minimum wage. Rather, the real Obama minimum wage is zero dollars and zero cents an hour. We have right now the lowest labor force participation since 1978 to the millions of Americans who have lost their job because of 1.7 trillion in new taxes because of crushing regulations. This is the Obama minimum wage, zero dollars and zero cents, not the political window dressing of 1010, the reality, the hard, brutal reality Madam President, last week I was in Nebraska at a rally, and a woman named Barb came up to me. She hugged my neck, and she said, Ted, I'm a single mom. I've got six little kids at home. My husband left me, and he's not paying child support. And I'm working five jobs trying to keep my kids fed, trying to keep them with clothes on their back. And Barb had tears in her eyes. You know, one of the most brutal consequences of Obamacare is it's forced millions of Americans like Barb into part-time work because the threshold for Obamacare is 30 hours a week. So instead of having one or two jobs, Barb and millions of other single moms are going from one job to another, to another, to another, and they're not spending the time with their kids. This is the brutal reality of the Obama minimum wage. 